Hey everyone, I hope you all are doing good and having a wonderful day. In this video, we are going to learn about how we can create our own custom nuclear templates, right? So I already have created one video on how we can create our custom templates in nuclear, but in this video, we are going to see that how we can create our own custom fuzzers that can be look uh, that can be useful to look for vulnerabilities like uh, XSS, SQL injection, and other important bugs, right? So, see the reason why we are using Nuclear is because Nuclear doesn't require you to have any programming knowledge, right? And it is actually very easy to create some basic tools like XSS scanners or SQL injection scanners using Nuclei, right? So, without further ado, let's get started. But also, again, if you haven't checked out my previous video in which I've shown you that how we can find XSS and automate the process of XSS using a very new and unique tool, then go ahead and check it out. The link is given in the description as well as you can see it on the right side of the screen. And now finally, with that being said, let us get started. So uh, first thing first, let's open our browser right over here, right? And now what we need to do is we need to type over here, nuclei template, something like this. And as you can see, we have this, uh, search results and now we need to click on this one right so this link is already given in the description so you don't need to uh, search this on google you can directly go to the description and click on the link right and now when, once we have opened this particular uh, web page now what we want to do is we want to uh, open this nuclear documentation right so i'm going to show you everything step by step like how we can create nuclei templates in the most simple and easy way possible right but first let us try to see that how we look for vulnerabilities manually right for example let's say i'm going to test php.vulnerable.com right and now let's say i've identified some parameters like uh we know there is this uh i think there was something like this yes this one okay see so for example let's say over here we have this uh, link right now we want to find a uh, cross -site scripting vulnerability over here right so what is the first step that we need to do obviously you can throw some payloads like uh, script alert one script at close something like this right but what is the basic steps in order to understand whether this uh, particular application is vulnerable to uh, access or not right it is to test the dangerous characters right so what we can do is we can type a string for example let's say uh, superman and with some dangerous characters let's say symbol a uh, single quote double quote less than and greater than simple and we can verify it right over here we can just type superman and if it is getting reflected in the response which means that it is vulnerable right right now you see it is not getting reflected right only these things are getting reflected it doesn't matter right the thing is that if the dangerous characters are reflecting in the response then it means that that particular application is vulnerable right over here as you can see these things are getting reflected as it is it could be vulnerable but uh depending on the application do we have some web application firewall or something like that which may prevent you right but the simple and the first step will be to test the dangerous characters once we have done that then we can manually check the uh, application and we can manually find if that particular application is vulnerable to access or not by typing some payloads right for example if i uh, if i were to scan this particular application with katana so we can type katana minus q like this let's hit enter we'll see we have a bunch of these urls and in this url suppose we have this one right let's copy this we'll space it right over here now first thing is to find if the application is filtering the dangerous characters or not right i just type that let's verify it so batman single code double code less than greater than and as you can see uh, everything is getting rendered as it is without any filter which means that this application is 100% vulnerable right we can just now try some payloads like image src equals to x on error equals to alert one right and we'll see that we are successfully getting an alert right which means that this application is vulnerable so obviously the first step is to test the dangerous characters if they are getting reflected as it is or not and this is what we are going to do with the nuclei template which we are going to create right so the nuclear template that we are going to create is going to do this thing which is to test the dangerous character whether they are reflecting in the response or not right and if it is reflecting then it's going to show the message that this could be potentially vulnerable to cross-site scripting right so let's see how we can do that 
so we have this particular uh, you can say id for nuclei right so we can easily create any template without any issues the first thing first we need to create an id right so id will be the name of that particular uh, uh, template for example here in the id i just i can type xss detect like this then we need to specify the info you can just do this and in the info we can first specify the name and you can just specify xss scanner then you can specify author like for example here i am the author so i'm just putting my name then we can specify description as well right so uh, this template will look for dangerous characters reflecting in the uh, response right and then the last thing that we need to do is we need to specify the severity like what will be the severity of this template if it gets detected right so severity is going to be medium right so a typical reflected exercise is you know uh, a category of medium severity right once we have done that then what we need to do is we need to send the request to the uh, to the server right how we can do this let's go to the nuclear documentation and let's understand this let's go to this template guide and here let's click on http right so see it is saying that start the request for the template right over here so we need to specify this http then we need to specify the method and then we can specify the path right so path there is this base url let's try to understand what is this base url right so base url is the url that will be given to the temp uh, to nuclei right for example if this url is given so this will be the base url and the re root url will, will be the absolute url which is over here right so the base url is actually including the path right but the root url is not including any path right that's the basic difference over here we want to use base url because the parameters and the queries are going to be in the base url right so you can specify http then we can specify method uh like this right this put this and then we can check the path right like over here you see we have this path we need to specify this so let's say path and obviously the path is going to be uh let me just set the path right over here base url right like this okay we can also put this like his and we can specify this like just the syntax which is given over here and now we have this base url so every url is you know we will send request to each and every base url right so if the url is this one we are going to send a request on this whole particular url not on the root url like this right so everything is included in the base url now once we have done this what we can do is we can now fuzz the parameters right we need to replace the parameters values to the payload basically right so let's see how we can do that for that let's go to the nuclear uh, documentation and let's click on this http fuzzing see over here we have this fuzzing so first thing first we need to select the part on which you want to fuzz right so as you can see over here if we specify fuzzing and part query then it's going to fuzz in the query parameter right in the parameters like if you specify this then the values that are going to be replaced are from these parameters right this question cat uh this what you can say this artist this cat right so these are the things that are going to be replaced and this is what we wanted to do right so we can just do this by typing uh fuzzing like this and then we can specify a part query right let's try to verify the syntax so we need to specify this like this right and now we have this and then we need to spe specify the type right so let's try to understand what are the types we have in nuclei first we can directly replace second we can add a prefix and third we can add a postfix like postfix the value with payload and infix the value between the payload right let's try to understand what this means so let me just open a notepad suppose we have this url right test php worldweb.com 
uh, and we have let's say a path dot php and we have a parameter id equals to one right now if i use the default setting which is the replace so if i specify any payload so it will directly replace the payload like if i specify batman it's going to directly replace the parameters value with the batman right if i choose prefix then it's going to add like by default we have this value right so it is going to append our value which we are going to specify in the nuclei before that particular uh, default value as you can see this will become the value if we use prefix and if you use postfix then it's going to be one and then batman so the original value plus our value so we are interested in this particular thing right we are going to use the postfix method let's try to see how we can use this so you can specify type Here it is, and we can specify postfix, all right? And then if we go back, we see we have modes, right? Let's try to understand what modes are. So we have two modes basically, multiple, in which it's going to replace all the values at once, and single, in which we have we are going to replace one value at a time. So this will be useful if we are using this. For example, let's say we have we have multiple parameters, right? ID equals to one, and name equals to five R, something like this, right? Now if I use uh, if I use multiple, then it's going to replace both of these values at the same time. But if I use single, then it's going to use uh, replace the value one at a time. So first it's going to replace the value of ID parameter, and then it's going to replace the value of name parameter and so on. Right? So we are interested in this single method. Why? Because sometimes the parameters value are dependent on other values, right? For example, if you if we specify both of these values as Fayas, it could cause some trouble at the back end, right? So we are interested in this single. So let's specify the mode. And then we can just go and type single, right? And now we have done most of the part. And now the last part is to specify the first parameter, right? So this is the parameter through which we are going to replace the value, right? So in the query, what we want to replace the value with is going to come in the first part. For example, uh, over here you see that the value which we have we want to replace is this one right so a random string uh, over here for just for the example i have given batman a single code double code right but over here what we need to do is we need to specify this one right because this is the thing in which we are interested so we can just copy and paste it like this and we can just do this yes and we are good to go now this particular application is going to fuzz and it's going to replace every query value one by one with this particular value, right? We can specify multiple values over here if you want, right? And now our fuzzing part has been completed. Now the value is going to be replaced. And the final thing which you want to do is we want to test if the particular value is getting reflected in the response or not, right? Let's see how we can do that. So we can just specify matches, see, right? Matches is going to check whether the particular value which we are going to give is reflecting the response or not right so we can specify type a word because we want to look for the uh, value in which is text basically which is which is word right then we can specify part we want to look for the value in the body part right so we can go over here you will see this space http and we can get more infos about what this matcher is let me show you let's see this is the matcher right so we have this tsl uh, we have this get right so and then we have to specify the words which we are going to match right so we have specified the part and let's specify the words and the words which word we want to match is this one right because first of all we are replacing the value right we are replacing the value of every parameter with this particular value and then we are matching that value if it is reflecting in the response or not and if it is reflecting, then it will show us that access is detected with the severity of medium, right? So we have basically created this tool now, right? This whole uh, template is now your simple basic access scanner, right? Pretty amazing, isn't it? Because if you are uh, not familiar with uh, programming, then you think that this is very obvious, this is very easy. But in pro if, you, if you want to create an access scanner, it will take a whole lot of lines compared to this simple 23 line of yaml template right so let's copy this and now we can just verify it so i can just open a uh, kali linux over here let me create a new directory let's demo let's create space this template over here 
uh, cd demo and then we can just type xss.yml paste it right over here right and now let's save this and now let's try to first of all find all the parameters so we can just use the katana to http test php not well web.com minus o and let's save the file as urls dot text let's wait for a few seconds so first of all we are calling all the urls and now let's see if this particular tool is able to detect xss or not with the template that we have created wait for a few seconds and now if i type nuclei minus l urls dot text minus t for the template xss.yml hit enter and let's see what happens after that as you can see it has detected the xss right and you see if you notice that this particular parameter we already have tested right over here see hpp question pp equals to this parameter right so now we are successfully able to create a simple uh, nuclear template that can be used to detect cross site scripting right let's try to use this template on a real world application now let us try to use our template which we have currently created to find xss right on this particular live application so i already have crawled all the possible links of this particular domain so let me just show you if i type cat new urls.txt we'll see that we have all of the urls even from the subdomains as well right now from all of these urls we want to check whether any of these parameters or any of these urls uh, is vulnerable to reflected xss or not right so what we can do now is we can just specify nuclei minus l new urls dot text minus t xss dot yaml right and let's hit enter and let's see what happens after that as you can see our tool has been able to successfully detect uh, three xss right so out of these these two are not uh, considered as xss because they are reflecting the javascript file right so let's try to see this one and let's verify if this is vulnerable or not so i can just open it in microsoft edge and we can just specify payload and this rc equals to x on error alert one this as you can see our xss got successfully popped up right over here right which means that this application was vulnerable to xss and now we have successfully created our own custom template now you must you have noticed this thing that in the payload we have given batman single code double code like that right but why this is showing over here this is because i have modified the uh, template a bit in which right now i'm currently fuzzing this characters only without any strings at all right because now this is the thing that you need to understand that with experience you'll come to know that what type of exactly fuzzing characters you need right in some application you'll see that if you provide anything else like in the id parameter it was accepting a, a numeric value right but batman is what batman is a string value which is why it was earlier it was not able to detect xss that's why i need to replace it with this one right and now it's successfully able to find the cross scripting i hope that you have under, un, understood it and now this is the thing that i again wanted you to uh, make sure that you understand that you need to modify this particular template or you need to create your own custom template based on your experience right you, you don't don't just go and use someone else template maybe it could work for you but many times it will just give you duplicates and uh, uh, repetitive values right so you need to understand that you need to create custom payload for yourself for your program for your particular target on which you are hacking on right i hope that you have understood it if you have any doubts if you have any issues feel free to let me know your doubts or issues in the comment section also do join our telegram channel if you want to stay updated with the latest trends and technologies going under cyber security as well as web development and if you like the way i teach then i am currently running two courses both of those courses links are given in the description you can check them out and the courses are also displaying right over here so yeah if you're interested then go ahead and check them check them out they are awesome courses and everything is practically demonstrated over here and now with that being said Keep learning, keep hacking and thanks for watching.